like to say he's a recovering engineer. Uh, before founding Magic Leap, he created companies specializing in computer-assisted surgery and surgical robotics. So you'll see a theme that Roni's always thinking about making people's lives better. But he's more than an engineer and an entrepreneur. He is, I think, truly a visionary. And not only a visionary, but a humanitarian as well. He and the Magic Leap team are at the forefront of bringing immersive digital content into every aspect of our lives. What they're building is the next great creative platform. Spatial computing powered by 5G networks. It will redefine entertainment, sports, communications, learning, productivity, you name it. And you'll see that. It'll come to life for you um, when Roni goes through um, his vision for Magic Verse. And the first time I met Roni and his team at their Florida campus, I knew that AT&T had to be part of what you're gonna see as an amazing vision. And I'm happy to say we formed a productive partnership last year. Please welcome a very dear friend, partner, and true visionary, Roni Abelitz. Hey everybody. I wanted to thank John and the at and team for having um, myself and Magic Leap here today. We're gonna to talk about a concept we call Magic Verse. So a little bit of our, our history of what we're doing, uh, its origin and evolution. Um, really started out as a comic book company. Um, just think about wild and creative ideas. That's like a slice of uh, one of our first comics trying to imagine what this company would become one day. Um, and wanted to like liberate content into the world so they would be around you. Um, if anyone's tried, um, the dead must die, which you can which you can see here. Um, it's a little bit more unsettling when you're fighting a white walker that's coming out of the wall into the world after you, than just sitting comfortably on the couch. So it, it's be, we're beginning to see that idea of content liberated all over in space. Um, and we were a loose collective, like just wildly different minds from aerospace. I, I was employee zero. Uh, Sam, who was employee one, came from NASA. We came from robotics, comics, film medicine, and we came together to an interesting team. Uh, today we're over 1,700 people, uh, we raised some significant capital, a couple billion dollars, and, and really thousands of patents uh, and trademarks and things that we built up um, over the last few years. Uh, I just want to talk to you about like our evolution, which is really interesting. The first thing we built, I call it the spatial light field generator. Uh, we nicknamed it the Beast. It was this giant machine, like something out of Clockwork Orange, and you'd stick your head in this frame, um, and the idea was, could your brain be the display? So in order to understand if this stuff was working, um, you know, myself and a couple of others, we were like the guinea pigs, and we were trying to understand what is a, a volumetric signal that could unlock your visual cortex to become this display. Um, and then we evolved into something, which is like what we're about today, which is like sensory field computing, the data that, that those devices create, they see you and they see the world, the notion of human-centered AI, and something we'll talk a little bit more deeply about, which is magic first. One of the take-homes for today is that the world we see is one that this new internet being built, this amazing infrastructure that combines edge computing and data, these coming 5G uh, internets, um, which will be everywhere. They're going to do amazing things, but they'll also bring a new class of devices and capabilities. So we see spatial computing which is what we do as one of the most interesting things that come out of a new internet. Um, again, an internet that brings like computing to the edge, super low latency, and a lot of compute combined with that data at the same time. It allows you to do things that we never could do before with the internet that we know. Um, and we're doing that uh, we, with, with telcos around the world. We started with AT&T. Uh, they invented the telephone. Uh, you, know, you think about the building blocks of the internet from Bell Labs. Uh, we thought it was a fundamental new thing, and we were like, how does spatial computing become part of that new internet? Um, one of the key things is like the strategy of looking at that new internet getting built, which is edge computing infrastructure, low latency data. Um, we realized that AT&T would be this ideal partner 
uh, to bring our vision of this like spatial computing world that could live on top of that new infrastructure. And it, it so happened to be that they're building that at the time where our technology matures for these two things to come together. And that 5G infrastructure for us is really critical. What happens this year, you know, between now and 21 and 22, 23, will be kind of an amazing uh, kind of change happening in the world. Um, a little bit of taste, if you haven't uh, seen uh, The Dead Must Die, this is just a little bit of that. Um, uh, if you've seen Game of Thrones this season, it's a little taste of actually participating. <laughs> is literally just a tiny taste of what a massively multi-person world of spatial computing could be like, where the stories you experience on television become unlocked. And they're not just in little rooms, they'll be across whole spaces like this with thousands of people, tens of thousands of people, and eventually across whole cities and countries. A little bit about the differences between